Okay. Hi, everyone. So the feature we're talking about today is security approvals in merge requests. Um, this has been also called security gates. I don't love the term security gates because it's kind of, um, the point isn't to make security a blocker. It's providing a place for other teams to collaborate. So um, the basic idea with what we were working on before, so first I'll start, we have a agenda doc, should be on the invite. What's the goal? Um, a quick demo, which I was having some GDK issues, so we're gonna do it live and see how that goes. Um, a little bit on background jobs because we need to discuss how background jobs work in the Rails app to understand where to plug things in. We're gonna talk about some of the key data models and some of the syncing workers that make the magic happen. And um, hopefully we never have to look at these two files, but we may have to, to make sense of the gaps. Cool. So um, before we jump into that, does anyone have any questions? Okay. Who are you? I am Lucas. Let's reduce yeah. our staff when we call for YouTube. <laughs> oh, fair enough. So my name is Lucas Charles. I'm a uh, software engineer on the secure stage on the static and, static and dynamic analysis team. And um, this is security approvals coming out to a GitLab instance near you starting today. Okay, so let's go back here. So the basic idea with this is that we were looking for a way to kind of leverage a new um, approval system where a security team that's defined by a user on a project can add their approvals to, before a merge request gets merged. And um, to do so, we want to leverage our existing security reports and pipelines. So with the proposal, the idea is that uh, requiring an ultimate license, you go into your product settings, you create a special approval group with a, in this case, a predefined name. Ideally, this would be more of a um, state toggle on the rule type. It needs to have a approval count of greater than one. And right now it needs to be named exactly this. And we'll get into how that works in a second. Um, the existing approval UI has a bit of code debt. So um, to clarify terminology, this is adding approval rule. These are users and groups. And you add the, you add the approver from the users and groups to the approval rule. And so each row here is an approval rule. So there's also a lot of legacy support around the idea of um, approvals before approval rules were a thing. So you'll see this row right here, all members with developer role or higher. If I set this, then that adds a required approval to the project, but there is no real approval rule. This is kind of a, like a shim that is, um, internally it's a project setting, so it's not an actual database instance or database record for an approval rule. Maybe that's too granular, but that kind of is important later. Okay, so we add the approver. It's now here with this handy tooltip. And then once you actually add it here, MR shows up right here. And I am the approver in this approval rule. And there is one required approval. Now, that would just be how approval rules work. But in this case, the important thing is that this number right here changes according to the results of the security report. So in our case here, if we change this from a low to a critical, it is now required. But if the severity reported back is medium or lower, then it will become optional. So here is a overly complicated flowchart for all the conditions. Um, the, the reason I wanted to touch on this is because 
the way that we in the life cycle is we need to we looked at different ways we could set up this gate and the basic idea is that we need to require by default so if your pipeline never runs the default state should be an approval is required so we need to toggle the approval state off at the end of a pipeline execution rather than on at the end of a pipeline execution so in the case of a high severity vulnerability there are two directions one is opening an mr before the pipeline finishes and the other one is opening an mr after the pipeline finishes and those have slightly different life cycles but high severity vulnerabilities should always require approval missing vulnerability report so if there's no report at all that should also require approval low severity or medium severity should remove the approval or what we call is make it optional so you lower the approvals required count and an empty vulnerability report also makes approvals optional now this chart is in the parent issue but i'll link here So th this is important because we wanted to understand that at the beginning, when you start a pipeline, if an approval was added and then someone changes code, we need to reset to the original count. So there's essentially two life cycle stages. There's syncing to the original state, and then there's de decrementing the approvals required if necessary. And if you look at, I'll zoom in here too. Okay, maybe I can't zoom in. Um, assuming people can read this, there's two slightly different paths here. Pipeline finishes, we open an MR. When we're opening an MR, we copy project rules to the MR. And we run sync report approver approval rules, which is essentially the the job that copies the rules and then sync security reports to report approval rules which syncs the approval rules to the contents of the security report now these two steps are slightly broken out because the second one depends on the result of the pipeline so we have to check if the pipeline is finished and in this case they run separately but the result is still supposed to be the same Does that make sense so far? Okay. A quick question. So basically the same code actually drives both of the life cycles. Yes. Right? It just because the job starts in the trigger that uh, is executed when the plan is finished. That's right. Um, there's one other part of the life cycle that we need to pay attention to as well, which is when you delete a project approval rule, because we're, again, we're talking about the two data models here. We have project rules and then we have merge request rules. And this first worker copies the project rules to the MR. So if you delete a project rule, should that cascade to the merge request? We said yes, <laughs> although that's um, a question that uh, we, we had to go back with product on. And if you add a rule, does that cascade to merge requests as well? But um, so, so that's what these two extra boxes are. If delete a product rule, it does nothing. So it doesn't revoke approvals required on all outstanding merge requests. And then over here, are there outstanding merge requests when you're adding a project approval rule, update all non-merged MRs with the approval rules. Cool. So what does this look like in the code? Well, here's our approval project rule model. 
which belongs to a project and it has a rule type. So there's regular approval rules, code owner approval rules, and report approval rules, which is our new rule type that we added with this work. Code owner isn't used because it's dynamically generated according to the code owner file, but it's here to reduce confusion because we are trying to, we have a model or we have a concern right here, the approval rule like that creates parity between the approval project rule and the approval merge request rule model. As such, the approval rules require a source rule. So if you're a merge request rule here, your source rule will be where, where this was generated from. It will be the project rule. Currently, project rules have no source rule, but it could make sense to add them at the group level later on. And so we have the pro approval project rules with the regular code owner report approver types. We have the same rule type here on the merge request rules, but there's actually a subtype, which is our report type. In this case, there's only one security. The idea being perhaps we want a code quality report approver at some point. And then there's also the approval rule like, which is this concern shared by both. And this is where a lot of the same logic lives, like belongs to users and has many groups, has a name and has an approvals required. Okay, so looking back at these life cycle, when you open an MR and have no pipeline, we call this new merge request worker. Once this executes, it starts, uh, it fires off and it basically just syncs the merge request to the pipeline. Then we update the head pipeline for merge request. And this basically says what SHA is this merge request pointed at and it links it to the pipeline. When pushing changes to a branch with an open MR, then a number of, uh, I believe 18 workers fire. But the only two we really care about is this update merge request worker and update head pipeline. And this only occurs for open MRs. So this is why this part is important. If there is no open MR, then we have to plug into a different point to actually sync. I, so I have, merge, I have the refresh service listed here because the refresh service is really what handles the bulk of that interaction. And that's the same thing that gets fired from the new merge request worker. So let's take a look at this refresh service. Now this is overriding a, um, well, the non-EE refresh service, which we don't really care about here, but we'll just look at it quickly to give you an idea of what this is doing. Refresh merge requests. It reloads merge requests, it outdates suggestions, refreshes pipelines, marks pending to do's done. A lot of just standard behavior for what happens every time you need to refresh a merge request from a uh, code change. The EE version is the one that's on top of that and it has EE specific behavior. So we override the refresh merge request service, that main method, and we add on one additional behavior we call super, we update the approvers, and then we reset approvals for merge request. A resetting happens if it's a new merge request or if it's an existing one. If it's new, then we don't care, it doesn't really do anything. And if it's an existing one, this would um, increase the approvals required back to what whatever the approval project number is. So if you say you have uh, approval project rule with approvals required of two. Then from this, you create an approval merge request rule with approvals required of two. From there, pipeline runs and it decreases the approvals required to zero because there's no security vulnerabilities. 
and then you push code and on pushing code it calls this refresh service which resyncs rules and resets approvals required to two so that's the flow for what we're talking about here So what we do is we grab the branch name, we find all the merge requests for this branch, and these will be siblings from our current merge request. If there's multiple, then we need to sync all of them. For each merge request, we find the target project because this merge request could go across projects, and then we reset the approvals, and we delete all existing approvals on the merge request. Updating approvers, merge request for source branch. So find all merge requests for the source branch. We sync code on rules and we sync what we're calling report approver rules. So report approvers currently is all security report approvers, but it's kind of a generic model for, like I said, a code quality or another report approval type. So this sync report approver rules. Is pretty straightforward. If merge request is merged, then we don't care. It's been merged, so we don't want to affect what is considered like a locked state. And we sync project approval rules to merge request rules, which means we take all approval rules on the on the target project. In this case, all we care about is a pr report approver scope. And then we find the report approver rule. So we first are initialized on that. And this would vary if we have more than one report approver. Currently, we don't. And we update it with the standard attributes, which basically says reset it to the project rules settings. And this would also sync it if you change the, user the users or groups on the project rule. During the sync, it would re uh, it, it would update the users, the groups, and the approvals required count. Cool. Any questions at this point? I'm not checking chat if this is for me. Oh, thanks. Okay. Um, I've got a question. So right now we just have one type of report approver. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is where we would plug uh, license slash compliance approvers. If you were to create such a feature, similar feature yeah. for licenses. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so we currently we call this security. Um, I think it could very well be the same. It could be a security type the so what we would really need to change if we we could call it compliance if we wanted to change that but um this worker it should sync all report approver rules regardless of what they are um the only thing is this part is currently hard coded so we should change that but um i i think that this should be fairly minimal in terms of the change because they're just they're just approval rules right he asked, what was the point then to distinguish the, the types? From just like a regular approval rule? Uh, yeah, what was the, the, the goal to introduce this three book type here? Yeah, so, so there, there's a couple things. In, in one case, we need, we need extra behavior to occur. And so we haven't, we've looked at the rule that copies project rules to merge requests, but we haven't yet looked at the service that lowers the approvals required count. So we need to distinguish the rule right there. Um, but the other one is this UI gets pretty complicated here because now let me use a different one. So here, here is a, uh, plain project and we'll let this 
think it's time loading, but um, the, the current UI, remember I mentioned that fallback rule. So I'll just use the screenshot instead. This here is a, they call it a fallback rule. It's not an actual rule. So if you change this number right here, this changes a thing called like project settings approvals required count. And it's a project setting. And if you change this number, you're actually creating a new database record. So we need a way to render this. We only render this row if there are no existing regular approval rules. And this, like Sam was getting into this because this is kind of complicated. What you need to do is you say, are there any regular rules? If not, render this row. If there are, render those. Are there, is there a report approval rule? If so, render this one, otherwise render none. And so it creates like a fairly complex chain to understand how to do, how to fill out the default state of this as well. So those are the two major reasons. Yeah, but isn't that already achieved with the, the report type? If you can go back to the code itself, please. Yeah. Um, so, so the rule type versus the report type. type. Yeah. Yeah, this, this was not necessary for us right now. This was anticipating that we will need more report types. OK, now because you were saying that uh, if we are introducing license compliant, it could be the same. So I was curious what kind of different behavior would imply having a, a different report type here. Yeah. Um, so so let's let's look at the next service so I can show you sync security reports to report approval rules. This service lives currently within the security namespace, but it's syncing reports to approval rules. So what it does is it finds the reports, it considers a it considers it safe if there's any reports and none have an unsafe severity. And this basically is medium, or I guess it'd be high, critical, and unknown. So if we wanted to make this service more generic, this right here would have to depend on some condition. And we could probably do something like if report security, like contains security, and then have a different condition for a different report type. But it seemed like a better idea to keep them distinct and introduce that state. Originally, there wasn't really any state on the report approval rules. So we have a lot of like kind of scary things in there, like looking at the name vulnerability check and determining if it's a security rule according to the name. That is just like a lot of code debt. So introducing a single state, state machine seemed like the the most explicit way of showing that. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. Cool. Yeah, so this service here, sync reports to approval rules. This is called during, um, yeah. The sync security reports for rules is called during the pipeline lifecycle. So that occurs right here. So in our CI pipeline, when the status transitions to a completed state, this is the same place that we sync our security reports. So in the same place that we process our security reports, we now sync our reports to the approval rules as well. And since this occurs on all states, it doesn't need the default branch uh, condition that we currently use. Uh, is there any potential for a race for non-default branches uh, when uh, security reports uh, are not being processed by the moment when the security report approval rules are being synchronized? So the um, there there is a possibility of that. Part part of the Part of the design for this is that it's always secure by default. So 
any condition that fails to sync the reports ensures that there is an approval by default. So that should keep things safe. Um, if this if the pipeline completed, but the security report here was not done processing, that won't really affect this one. Since the sync security reports worker, I have to go a couple of levels deep here. Since it uses the reports object here, this is a poro. Uh, this is not looking at database records. So it doesn't really matter if the other worker is processed or not. This will just check the JSON itself. Okay, so it just eagerly parses uh, the artifacts each every time. Yeah. Um, okay. the, I think it's here. Yeah, so the, so the security reports object right here gets initialized and it parses out the, the artifact directly. Um, you have to go a couple la layers into here to see where that's happening, but yeah, it, sh it shouldn't um, it shouldn't depend on the other background processing. Yeah, thanks. Uh, what did I what else did I have on this agenda? Uh, yeah, so. Key models, approval project rule, approval merge request rule. And I would also add here the approval rule like, which is that concern. Syncing workers sync report approval rules initially when you open an MR or update one. And then sync security reports always fires after a pipeline has completed. There is one case where it could occur before a pipeline has completed. And we have that in our refresh service as well. There we go. In merge requests, create service. When you're creating an MR, assuming the pipeline has finished before the MR has been created, we attempt to sync reports immediately after syncing the rules. This is a generic state wrapper around all rule-like objects that should give them a common behavior. And it has a very large complex spec that I would avoid looking inside. Cool. So any other questions? Okay, just slightly over time then. Thanks for attending everybody. And um, let me know if you have any other questions. Thank you. Thanks for, for demoing. Yeah, this was big. Thank you. Thanks.